Here's how to use layers in Affinity Photo. Hi, George here. I'll be showing you how to use the different layer types, how to work with layers here inside of Affinity Photo. And for this example, I have a project here that I did on this channel. So you go back and you can find that project. And on this one, we changed the background and we changed that using layers and a layer mask. And real fast, you'll notice a real nice fine detail in here, little wispy hairs kind of flying around out here. All that stuff is in the original background right there. So using layers, you can get real nice fine control and keep all those great little details. That's one of the nice things here about Affinity Photo. It's very good at doing this real fine detail stuff. Photoshop Elements, for instance, would lose most of those hairs. Affinity Photo keeps that stuff and it's all done with layers. Whenever you're doing any kind of more complex project, I guarantee you're gonna be using layers at one point or another. Let's just take a look and see what we have over here, right-hand side, a few things. Way back here, here's the original image. This is the background image. And I have that also right here. That's how the image came, just straight background like that. No layers, no nothing. And then as you apply effects onto this, as you pull her out onto a different layer, change your background, all that stuff builds up your list of layers over here on the right-hand side. Now in the layers panel, notice how this selected layer is blue. If we go over here to our project, I can click on a layer and you can see which layer I'm working with by that blue highlight. Okay, back over here again. There's a little lock right here. This layer is locked right now, so I can't do anything on that layer. For instance, I can't come in here and grab my move tool and move it around. The layer is locked. I can't paint on it. The layer is locked. You can unlock the layer just by clicking on that. Unlocks it or clicking it again. Locks it. You can show or hide a layer right here. If you don't have any layers shown, you're just seeing transparency, and that's represented by this gray and white checkerboard pattern. That shows transparency. Your layers panel is up here, kind of shows up in the middle of your panel set. If you don't see the layers panel, if it was closed by accident, you can find it again up here under window and come down here to layers and it's right there. If you choose a different panel over here, the layers panel is still showing there as a tab. You also can double click on this. It will hide that whole section. Click it again, brings it back up again. Same thing for any panel, such as our color panel up here. If I double click on that, hides it, click it again, brings it back up again. So pretty easy to show and hide panels as well. Right down here, a few layers controls. We can adjust the opacity right here. We can put our blend modes on right there. This is blending multiple layers together in different ways. We have some additional options right over in here. These are for your blend modes. I talk more about that and I'll show that in other videos. This little icon is called a hamburger icon. Click on that. And you have just a few options in here. You can auto scroll. You can show group thumbnails. You can show the object type. It shows over here, left hand side object type. You can change your thumbnail background. That's the background in here in behind the thumbnail right there. And the options are auto, checkerboard background, or a dark or a light background. You also can change your thumbnail size. This is a medium thumbnail size. Let's change this over here to a small thumbnail, a little smaller. If you have a lot of layers, this is sometimes useful so you can get more layers shown on the right-hand side here. And here's a large thumbnail, easier to see what's inside. I normally have my set at the default, which is just medium. And then down here, closing and closed group, just leave those alone. That would then delete your layers panel from the right-hand side, which you really don't want to do. You have to go back up here to the window and bring it back up again if you did that. At the bottom, a few things. You can edit layers right here. Here's your layer mask button, adjustments, layer effects, live filters. You can make new group layers or group layers together and add a new pixel layer right there and trash can for removing layers. So just a few things in here to control or work with your layers. Let's now switch back over to our big project over here. And again, I have a video about how I did this project on the channel. You can find that. It's just a changing background video. And that required the use of one layer here, layer mask right there. So that's the girl on her own layer right here, the layer mask. And then down here, a new background. And that's that wood look and some levels adjustments for the girl and adjustments here for the background. Let's take a look at some of our layer types over here, right hand side. You can see right here, just a little icon this tells you what kind of layer it is. These are pixel layers. This is an image layer. These are adjustment layers. Notice that this icon is the same icon as the icon right down here. And the pixel layer right here icon, same as this icon right over here. Moving on up here, here's a layer mask on this layer and a little arrow right there. Click on the arrow. You can see here's a layer mask underneath. Notice it kind of moves from here down to here. This allows you to edit the layer mask directly. Also notice how this is indented just a little bit. That means that this layer mask is attached to this layer. And there's the icon for layer mask. Again, same icon is right down here. I'll just collapse that again. Another adjustment layer. And I put a text layer on top here with that A that shows that this is a text layer. 
Our text is your basic one line big letters. Just bring that back up again, just like that. Notice that there's a big FX right here. This is the same thing as this FX right down here. These are layer effects. And in this case, on this layer, I'm using this drop shadow effect right in there, right in behind. You can see it best over here on her shoulder. Click on that, brings up the layer effects dialog box right here. This is similar to layer styles over in Photoshop Elements, but a lot more you can do here in these layer effects. Much more control here and quite a few more effects that can be added. I'll close that one down. So our top one here is a text layer. I just typed layers. That's why it says layers right here. That's what I typed over in there. Notice that this is highlight in this light blue color, kind of medium light blue color. And there's an outline around that layer over here on our main window area. So I can see which layer is selected. If I come down to this layer, notice how that outline went away. And we don't see an outline here because this is an adjustment layer, which applies to everything underneath of it. Come down here to this layer. This is a pixel layer. And notice that this is the shape right here. Here's the outline of that pixel layer. When you're on one of these layers like this and you see these control handles over here, this allows you to actually adjust the contents of that particular layer. I can come in here and I can grab this and I can stretch it like that. Or from a corner, I can stretch from a corner right here. Or come in just outside of a corner and I can spin this around. Or I can grab this control handle right here and spin it around from that control handle. So a lot of potential adjustments in here. If you notice right down here, we have a transform panel showing bottom right hand corner. That shows me what I'm doing in here. So I can see my tilt right there. I even can type in a tilt in here if you want to. Let's just put this rotation to zero. There we go, puts it back the way it was. And it's rotating around that corner here if I do the control from down in this transform box. You also can move the contents of a layer around like that. Just drag it and drop it where you want it. Just kind of drag it around. We also have a stacking order on layers. This layer is at the top of our layer stack. So it's the furthest in front right here. Now, she's down a couple of layers. You can drag layers up and down in your layer stack over here, and it changes the stacking order in your main working area. Let's just take this. I'll drag it underneath her picture like that. And notice how the layer is now, the text is now in behind her picture. There we go. There's our text in behind like that. Again, notice how nice that bringing in of those little hairs in there are. Really nice job on that. I really like how Affinity Photo handles hair especially. So there we go. There is the text in behind. So this layer is now behind that layer or under it over here on the right hand side. Let's put that back to the top again. There we go back on top. So pretty easy to adjust the sequence or order of your layers in here. Of course, you can show or hide any layer by this little toggle button right there. If you see your FX or anything over here, right hand side, you can bring that up by clicking on that. Here's our adjustments. If I come down here to adjustments, let's hide the adjustment. You can see there I've just added in some contrast onto that and that adjusts the whole picture with the contrast. I'm working on the whole picture. This one has a layer mask that is attached to this layer. So the layer mask is only being applied to this layer and that's how I hid that background. Now these adjustment layers in here, vibrance, exposure, and levels, these are all working on anything underneath that. In this case, it's just this layer here, which is our background layer. So I can change that and change that look in here just by showing or hiding that adjustment layer. And they're all working independently of each other. Here's our pixel layer. This is that new background, that wood background, hide that. And here's the original. Now this still has those adjustments applied to it because the adjustments are on top of that background layer. So if I hide my exposure, hide the vibrance, can't really see much there. I take all those out. You can see quite a bit of a change there with all of those out. So they're being applied on what's underneath. Now down here, it has two background layers. This is just a habit that I'm in. There's the original image. I normally leave that as it is. I will then right click over in here and choose duplicate from the pop-up menu and make a copy of that layer. I'll then hide that layer and then I'll work from the copy. That's just a safety, just in case I mess things up when I'm working on my image. I can then go back to the original if I have to. So it's always in there. So it's a little kind of a backup inside of your project file. Let's right click on that again. And so this brings up a pop-up menu in here. We can cut, copy and paste layers. We can hide layers, lock layers, exclude from snapping, delete, duplicate mask to below. That's what I did up here was masking to below. And again, I have that in that other project for this change in the background. If you want to see how that's all done, merge down, merge visible. You can group and ungroup multiple layers. Let's say I wanted to take all of these adjustments in here, hold the shift key down and select all those, right click, and let's group that. 
I now have all the adjustments in one group right here. I can sure hide the whole group and it hides or shows all of those adjustments in one shot. This is a useful trick if you have a lot of layers to begin to group stuff together just to kind of clean things up. Okay, let's go back here to the right menu. We have rasterize and trim, rasterize, rasterize to mask. There are two different kinds of layers, basic layers inside of Affinity Photo. Three if you separate out text from vector art. A vector layer is made using the pen tool over here or any of your shapes. All these different shapes, all these are vector shapes. And the pen tool is a vector shape. So if you're drawing with the pen tool, it's a vector shape. And text is kind of a subset of vector shapes. We have, of course, our adjustment layers that just act on other layers. All the rest of our imagery in here, these are all pixel-based layers. Basically, photographs and artwork like that that is not drawn by outlines. You see here, if I'm clicking on layers, you see the actual vector adjustments in here on that one because I have the pen tool selected. So this is a vector layer. There are times when you want to do something onto this layer that you cannot do as a vector layer. For instance, I can't come in here and place any of my filters onto vector layers. These are all hidden right now. They're all blocked out. I can't do anything except for some auto adjustments up here on vector layers. You have to be working on some kind of a pixel-based layer like this one. Go up here to filters. And now I notice that my filters are all available again. So there are times when you may want to apply filters onto a text layer, for instance. And you can do that by rasterizing it. Also, when you rasterize a layer, it merges any effects onto that one image and you get an image plus effects as the same layer. Let me just show that real fast here. I'm gonna right click on this, let's do a duplicate. Another habit I'm in, if I'm ever rasterizing a layer, I always make a duplicate and I rasterize the duplicate. Just in case, again, if I wanna go back and make adjustments, I can do that on my vector layer and I can't do that on my raster layer. Okay, so we've done that, let's right click on this. Let's come down to rasterize. I can choose to preserve my layer effects or not to preserve them. Let's just uncheck that, rasterize. When that's unchecked, it combines the effects into that image. If I check preserve effects, I'm gonna get them as separate effects like we have right here. And I can now come in on this one. It's again a pixel layer. And I can come into my filters and apply filters if I want to. So the filters are raster image or pixel layer image filters. You can rename a layer, just click into the name and type in a new name if you want to. That's occasionally useful for more complex imagery to name your layer so it's easy to see what you're working with. And again, we can show and hide this. Also notice here that the icon has changed on the vector-based text. It has a text icon. When we rasterize this, that converted it to a pixel icon right there. So it's now a pixel layer. Just bring that back the way I had it before. There we go. I mentioned merge layers. Let's see how that works. I'll come down here to this layer. This is a vector-based layer. This works on vector or pixel layers. And let's open up another file here, file. And I have one that I've opened up previously here in my open recent list. This is abstract thing, just some blue stuff. I'm gonna grab this and just float this window. Then I'll grab that background layer and then I'll drag it into this file. There it is, get that out of the way. Grab my move tool and this layer is locked. I'll unlock the layer and let's bring it down here so that it's just overlapping the layers down below. Now we can merge the contents of this into what's on this layer down below. Now over in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, you do it like this with your image on top that you're going into the letters on top. In Infinity Photo, it's the opposite of that. Just take this layer, drag it underneath. There we go. So you have the contents in behind. Same thing though. Let's click on our layers right here. And we we'll choose Mask to Below. And there we go. That image layer has now been masked into this background layer right here. So that's a mask to below. See where our letters are acting as a layer mask for that layer. Let's just control Z to back out of that. Let's bring this up on top. This time I'll right click and mask to below. And notice how we don't see anything here because the shape of that layer is acting as the mask. So it's the shape of the layer that becomes the mask. So control Z to back out of that one. So that's why in Affinity Photo, you put your contents layer underneath of your letters or shape layer. You then can right click on that and mask to below. There we go. Okay, I'll control Z and back out of that. And let's just get rid of this layer here. Again, you can remove a layer by hitting the trash can or the delete key, and that then removes that layer out of your project. Now, if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Affinity Photo, take a look at my complete training course. I'll put a link for that in the description. And in that course, I cover everything in here, all the tools, all the menus, all the panels, everything all the different personas up here. 
So when you finish the course, you'll have a really strong understanding about how to use Affinity Photo. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that, hit that subscribe button. And when you subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications of my new videos. I'm doing new videos all the time. You don't want to miss out any of those new videos. And I'll see you next time.